and this is Pink Zips. So before we start, I just wanted to say a really big thank you to all my new subscribers. When I put my first video out, I didn't, I just <laughs> didn't expect anybody to watch. And the first video now has got over 500 views and I'm just absolutely gobsmacked. Um, yeah, it's a really nice feeling actually and still growing slowly. So if you are new to my channel, please make sure to subscribe, give the video a like so that more people can see them. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to say a big thank you to all of those lovely people who have subscribed and the people who've left um, really nice comments on my two videos so far. So this is going to be a, the first makes video that I've done. This is going to be um, January makes. I'm a bit late actually to be honest and I was debating whether to skip January and just go straight into Feb because I'm in the middle of writing my dissertation and it's taken over my life but I thought no better late than never I'm gonna make the effort and um do a January makes I have made quite a few um things actually despite trying to do uni work but it's my way of relaxing and it's my hobby so I don't feel guilty if I take a bit of time out to make a few things so the first thing that I've made was actually on the 1st of January um and it's quite a summery top actually, but I'd had this fabric in my stash for ages. Those of you on Instagram will have seen it. This is an Ogden cami and I've added a little um, a little label in. It's just a generic label. Um, and I originally bought this fabric. Like I said, it's a double gauze. I don't know if you can see that a little bit better. It's really beautiful actually. I had it from Style Maker Fabrics. Um, it is a an American fabric website and got stung with the custom charge because I think I'd spent about £60 on fabric and then had to pay £30 delivery and then £30 custom charge. It was an absolute joke. So I shan't be doing that again, but it was worth it. I always forget to do this, uh, show you what I'm wearing. So before I move on to my second make, just quickly, this is a uh, pinafore. It's made in a um, baby cord, soft baby cord, I think it's called. It's quite thin, um, quite drapey as well. No stretch to it with just a black roll neck from Tilly and the Buttons. This uh, Simplicity K8302. And I made the view A. Fairly easy. Um, just made a straight size 12. Sizing down. I, do, I normally size down in the big four. Because I think they put quite a bit of ease in. And I have actually made the coat as well. I made that in a stretch tartan ponty type fabric. Um, so I might show you that in another video. But that was a while ago. Uh, so yeah, that's what I'm wearing today. So the second make, I actually um, showed that in my last video. That was the Ilford jacket. So if you haven't seen that already, I'll pop a quick picture here. I did a bit of a walk around um, on film to show you that in a bit more detail. So I, d I did make that in January, but I'm not going to talk too much about it in this video. The third make was actually a shirt for my dad's birthday so I haven't got the shirt with me today so I'll insert a picture here. My dad was 50 on the 17th so he's wanted me to make him a shirt for a while. I managed to get some fabric um, in like a paisley, it was um, felt like a poly cotton fabric with like a, a black paisley design on it. So yeah, I'll put a picture here for you. The third make in January was the shirt, which was also in my last video. That's the three pound shirt from Pound Fabrics that was sort of my wearable 12 for um, 
shirt making and again I'll put a quick picture in but I'm not going to chat too much about that one because that was in my last video as well. Also was the Camden Pinafore so I've mentioned that before but I have got it here. I have got it here with me because I just wanted to share with you. Those of you on Instagram will have seen it, my little mishap. So I'd made it, lined it, and then I decided I wanted to hand stitch the line into the bottom of the hem. Um, because I hadn't, it says to hem them separately, but because I hadn't overlocked the seams between the lining and the skirt, I just wanted the lining to be attached to the bottom. So I hand stitched the lining all the way around, finished it, got to the end, whacked the iron over it and <laughs> literally I'd got the iron for a second, pulled it off and a great big massive hole appeared in my lining. I was absolutely devastated. I'd spent like an hour hand stitching and then I was just getting a great big whopping hole in the lining. So luckily it was on the inside. There's no way I was going to replace all of the skirt. So I used a bit of hemming web, I think it is. It's like, it melts so it sticks things to um, each other. Cut a little bit of leftover lining that I'd got, glued that on with the hemming web, um, and used the, uh, is it teddy bear stitch? Black blanket stitch. Use the blanket stitch on my sewing machine to <laughs> patch job it up and yeah it's actually turned out okay it looks a bit rubbish but it's on the inside so so moral of the story use the pressing cloth turn your writing down <laughs> so the next make is a pattern i've wanted to make for a little while it's average seamstress the blouse so in my first fabric haul video i showed you the atelier brunette moonstone fabric First time I've ever bought a Tele brunette. As you know, it's quite expensive. So I opted to make a bit of a toile. So this is it. This is the shirt. Um, I did size down and I've added some little blue buttons. I didn't use the buttons all the way to the top. I didn't see the point because I'm never going to button it up past chest height anyway. Um, but yeah, it's really nice pattern actually. The only thing I had to do was the ease in the sleeve for my bicep wasn't very much. It was like a quarter of an inch, if that. So I have made an alteration to the pattern. I just added on, um, I think I added on half an inch either side of the sleeve pattern right on the edges. And then I've done the same on the bodice as well. Um, and it, it's worked out fine. So I have increased the armhole, which I wanted to, um, as well as the ease in the top of the sleeve. And that's given me a, a bit of extra room. And I'm quite happy with that. So I have actually made the Atelier Brunette version since. But that will be probably put that in my February makes because I only made that the other day. So... Then I went on to make the Lotta Dress by Tilly and the Buttons. So this, when this pattern first came out, I was a bit on the fence. I liked it, but I don't know, it was a bit plain. I thought maybe I could probably hack one of my original patterns from them into that sort of style. But in the end, I couldn't be bothered. And I saw loads of really beautiful versions on Instagram. And as always, had my arm twisted and just decided to purchase it and have a go myself. So I'd had this, um, I think it's a triple crepe in my stash for a while. Um, I was only about £5 a metre. I think I had it from Barry's Fabrics in Birmingham. Really beautiful. I didn't... I was a bit scared of wrecking it to be honest but I didn't want to make a toile because it's oversized pattern anyway plenty of ease and I just thought I'm just gonna go for it so this is the dress 
I have put it on Instagram. I've put a little label. I am meaning to get some labels with pink zips written on and like a little logo, but I haven't got round to it yet. So I'm just using these ones. These are off Wish. They were like a pound from uh, China. <laughs> but I, I primarily put them in things where I don't know which is the back. I mean, this one, this dress, you can tell which is the back because obviously it's higher. But in um, like PJs or shorts and things, I tend to just whack one of those in just so I know which is the back. Uh, but yeah, so there's not much to say about it really. You know, drop shoulder. It was a little bit tight around, around my forearm. I think when I make my next one, I'm going to just add just a quarter of an inch just to give me a bit more ease because um, my arms are quite, well, probably bigger than most. Um, I love, I mean, I know some people don't like elasticated waist dresses, but I love them. I think they're really comfortable, especially when you're sitting down and then you've eaten something. So, yeah, really nice um, make, to be honest. So happy with that one. Then I went on to make a Wilder Gown top. So again, that was another pattern. When that first came out, there was a big hype about it. And I looked at it and I thought, nah, that's not me. I'm going to look like I've got a bin bag on me. Obviously, the, the pattern cover is this. I mean, it looks lovely on the pattern model. But this beautiful um, white flowy tiered dress. But I just knew that wouldn't suit me. And I never even considered the top. I just saw that and I thought, nah, take me. And then obviously you see the um, other makes on Instagram and whatnot. And again, arm got twisted. And I thought, you know what, that would actually make a really nice blouse. And I have seen somebody make sort of a just above the knee length tiered dress version, which I might try and I might just put some um, waist ties in or whatever. But this is it. I haven't put this one on Instagram, actually. I haven't taken any pictures of it yet. Um, the only thing I will say, because it's quite a dark fabric, I made it in a viscose. Again, this is from Barry's Fabrics couple of pound a meter when it's on you can't really notice the detail in the um collar you can on camera actually it's coming up quite nice but when it's on it does look a bit uh, camouflage so i think if i make another one i might do it in a plainer fabric and a lighter fabric as well um i bought two meters of that uh viscose and i actually had enough to make an Ogden cami as well so I've had two for the price of one Ogden cami pattern to be honest is really quite good actually if you've got a bit left over I can normally squeeze it out of a meter three quarters of a meter if I'm savvy I just hate making stuff and then having loads of stuff left over and I know people use it for like cotton but uh, pocket bags and facings and stuff but to be honest they just for me anyway, they just get sat in the box, my remnant box. And even when I come to make other things, I always forget about it anyway. So I'd rather just use it up. And um, yeah, so I've had two, two for the price of one. So my next make, I have made one of these before. It is a pair of Tilly and the Buttons shorts. It's from the first book, the... First stitch, love it, love it first stitch. The Margot PJs, but I've cut them off into shorts and I've actually copied Devon Thread Tails a while ago. She made a lovely pair of shorts out of four fat quarters. And I've had some fat quarters in my stash for quite a while from when I very first started sewing. I didn't know what to do with them. So I have made another pair. My other pair's on Instagram and I've just started knitting as well. So this fabric has become a bit more relevant to me since then. <laughs> so yeah, just um, again, little uh, Wish China label in the back. So I know which is the front and the back. Yeah, so they're good for, not at the moment because it's freezing, but PJ shorts, uh, they'll be coming out in the summer. So I've just got two more. These were just really quick makes, to be honest, when I've 
had the odd hour or half an hour in between lectures and I've been able to just cut out and then do a little bit here, a little bit there. So I noticed on the Tilling the Buttons Lotter pattern, you could make out of a knit fabric. And I've got some white, well, it's sort of an off-white plain jersey. And I thought I'd make it into a t-shirt to see how it turned out. So this is it. It's not much to see really. It's just a plain jersey. I've done the hem with my cover stitch machine. One thing I will say, I cut, because the um, neck hole is quite large, when I did the original neck band, it like st stood up on the ends and I hate it when it does that. I got the steam on it, whacked loads of steam on it, did nothing. Then I came across a tutorial and I think it was on Professor Pincushion, I can't remember. And they basically said to cut the neck band on the bias so that when you fold it over and put it into the neck, it lays a bit more flat and it has actually improved it. I've unpicked all my overlocking or whatever and I don't think, nah, you're not going to be able to see that, but um, yeah, cut the neck band on the bias. If you're using this if you're not using ribbon and you're using the same fabric as the top or the dress then um, I found that that did help a little bit help it to lie flat but I think if I make it again I might make the neck back the neck hole a bit smaller because I don't really like um, my chest being out um, but I've got loads of this ivory and off-white jersey and the reason I've I think I went to that warehouse sale at Abercorn's a couple of years ago and they'd got um, a massive piece, I'd say it's about five or six metres long, I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I just grabbed it and since then I've thought about um, having a bit of a bash at dyeing it with, you know, those dye-on things you put in the washing machine. So if anybody's used dye-on before in the machine, please drop me a message on Instagram or put a comment down below to let me know how you got on because I am petrified that it's going to stay in or ruin my washing machine or stain my other clothes. So yeah, if you've used dial on before, please let me know how you got on and ha what your results were like because I would like to have a go at that and then I can use some of this jersey and just, you know, have a few different colours. And then the final one um, is a another Tilly and the Buttons Freya roll neck in this beautiful rib jersey fabric. I had this from Colville. I did also buy the blue colourway from Shona um, from Satisfaction. That was a few months ago and I made a Deer and Doji dress with that. But this time I have gone for the... Freya, what I will say with this, it's super stretchy. I would suggest I size down once, I would probably size down twice if I made it again. Although that seems a bit extreme, it is the stretch on it is just ridiculous. Like I had to change the differential feed as well on my cover stitch and on my overlocker just so that it wasn't um, stretching it out all over the place. Thank you for watching my January make. Sorry it's a little bit late. I am going to be doing a plans video shortly. It will probably be towards the end of February for a, a March plans video. So also just quickly before I go, I am taking part in the Frugal Frocks challenge that's been set up by uh, Ruan from the Yorkshire Sew so Girl and Sam from Frugalisma on YouTube. I'll link to their channels below. The Challenge is under the hashtag FrugalFox2021 over on Instagram. So go and have a look at that if you want to have a go. And just quickly, it is a challenge to use a free sewing pattern or you can use a self-drafted pattern that's not costing you anything. And you go to your stash, find a, a piece of fabric to make a new garment with. So the essence is frugal sewing, not spending a lot of money and getting a nice garment for it at the end and also sharing some free patterns with other sewists that we can then go and have a look at and try out for ourselves so 
again thank you for watching make sure you like and subscribe hit the notification bell and i'll see you again soon thank you bye bye